There's a lot of panic in the headlines about software engineers being replaced by AI. Oh my God! Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay this one is even a fully autonomous software engineer. But here's the thing. Most people who say that don't actually know what software engineers do day to day. A lot of it isn't even coding. People don't realize how many different skills software engineers need to have to actually do their job. In fact, these are several skills that AI can never really replace. So what do software engineers actually do? Can AI theoretically make you a better coder? Actually, it might make you a worse coder because it starts doing some of it for you. But can it like help you code faster? Yes. But will it help you code the right things? Will it help you understand what the business is wanting you to do? Will it help you understand if what you're writing is going to help you sell more of whatever you're trying to sell? Like, probably not, at least not now. Most of the digital products that exist have thousands of lines of code executing behind the scenes. This is the part that AI will help us out with, but we still need to understand technical details to be able to collaborate with the AI in the first place. Let's take the example of an online store. So this is an example of a full stack application. And on the left side, we have the client apps, which are the traditional UI. And on the right side, we have our APIs, which is the back end. Someone would use their username or password to log in and essentially we would send a HTTP request to one of our microservices. And this is the identity microservice. So it'll have all the username and passwords and we wanna check to see like, okay, does that person exist in our database? If they do, we'll send a response back saying, yes, they're able to access the rest of our microservices. Then we'll send another request to view the catalog. So there might be products on this store and the database itself will have all of the metadata for each product. And it'll then send a response back, which will show the actual images and the metadata for those products. And this code wasn't written in a day. It takes months of planning, collaborating with team members and regular check-ins with product managers to make sure that the implementation is on track. Product managers will usually work with customers to get an idea of what features need to be created, then they'll relay that information to the software engineers. The software engineers then take that feedback and come up with a strategy to actually build the product. So here's an example of a board that a senior engineer might set up after speaking to the product manager to understand what the customer wants. So here you can see that it's very much like any other project that you've maybe done in the past, where you have a to-do list, an in-progress place, in QA, which is quality assurance testing, and then the done section is for all of the items that are done. So here the senior engineer will actually create tasks. So it's up to them to design what features need to be done. It's up to them to also estimate how long things will take. So here, for example, we have implement feedback collector, add NPS feedback to wall board, add analytics events to pricing page. These are all things that still need to be done on the team. Now in progress, you can see what engineers are currently working on. And so this also gives a good understanding of when you meet with your team, who is working on what and what stage of the process that they're in. It just helps organize the whole flow. All that being said, you're clearly gonna have to understand how to design systems, how to code, work with team members, and how to solve problems that you've never seen before. So how are you supposed to learn all of that in a really short amount of time? Well, that's where I'd recommend Course Careers. Course Careers teaches you how to code and land a software engineering job. They offer career tracks such as software development fundamentals, front-end development, back-end development, among much more. Their platform is replacing the need for going through traditional schooling. You don't have to have a degree to become a software engineer anymore. Many of their graduates don't have previous experience or a degree, and they outcompete college graduates for jobs. And you guys, look at how many courses they have. There really is an endless amount of learning that you can do on the Course Careers website. Oh, and they even have real industry professionals teaching these courses. Recognize this guy? He's been teaching people how to code for years on YouTube. The best part, you'll be able to join live sessions with real professionals where you can get one-on-one -on -one and group support. And a cool feature that's super unique to the platform is that they have employers that can request to interview graduates from course careers, and top students are getting jobs without ever applying. This is a great place to begin your journey with coding, learning an entire stack, meeting with industry professionals, and networking to land a job. Everything that you need in one easy to use platform. You guys, Course Careers also has a free intro course. So if you click the link in the description below, it'll tell you how to get started right away. And you don't need any software engineering experience or a degree. So what are you waiting for? All that being said, 
it's hard to take a snapshot of a typical day for a software engineer and generalize what all software engineers do. For example, I'm a mid-level engineer, so I'll dabble in system design, but I'll also work on implementation, maintaining infrastructure, helping customers when I'm on call, and attending meetings to stay up to date on team-specific conversations. Recently, I've been working on a solo project, which has been a lot of fun, but it also looks a little different compared to team projects. In the beginning of the project, or month one, most of my days involved researching and talking to product managers to understand how I would architect the project and what business requirements were needed. This involved talking to more senior engineers and discussing implementation ideas with them as well. Eventually, I had to set up a design review meeting where I went over my design with the team and they gave me feedback. Okay, so I won't be giving any actual work examples because that's confidential, but I'll walk through a typical example that you might see in the software engineering industry. Okay, so we're gonna look at another system design diagram. Here, this is a banking system, so you can see that we have two different ways to interface with our system. One is by going through a single page application on your desktop browser or the mobile app. And usually for both interfaces, we're gonna go to the sign-in controller first to sign in. There's a security component that we need to use to actually verify whether or not that person exists in our database. And then we also have functionality to reset our password controller, which will then send an email using our email system to the user so that they can just reset their password. And then we also have um, the main part of the actual application, which is giving the customers their bank information. So here you can see that we have an accounts summary controller. And a controller is just a fancy way of saying an API that receives requests and responses. And then here we have the mainframe banking system and the actual system itself behind the scenes, which is giving that user their account summary. Once I had the design down, I had to estimate several of the features to help plan out the rest of the work and give managers a certain expectation for when everything was going to be completed. Okay, so this feature is estimated to take about two weeks with one software engineer. And then this next one, it seems like it'll probably take a week because we also have to consider the definition of done, which includes testing it, manually testing, make sure we're also requesting it. And finally, in months two and three, I started the actual implementation process. Now, the implementation process is kind of a broad sweeping statement. There's a lot that goes on in between, so I'll explain. Part of it was just coding out the features, but a lot of time was spent actually debugging and troubleshooting things that went wrong, things that were unexpected. This will be a big part of your job when you become a software engineer too. I think people underestimate the amount of time that they will actually spend coding versus troubleshooting and fixing bugs. Okay, so there are also other things such as utilizing AI, testing, documentation, just to name a few. But there are way too many to talk about to actually finish this video on time. So back to the video. I think it is really important to like, how do I use GitHub Copilot in, in my, you know, in my work? Or how do I use ChatGPT to like, you know, maybe get some answers to these questions faster than looking through the docs or whatever it is? Like, sure, that's going to certainly help. But again, it's not going to tell you like how to understand what your business needs. It's not going to tell you how to understand like what your users need. It doesn't replace all those other parts outside of the actual coding that I think are really important and are going to continue to still be really important for software engineers, at least for good software engineers. As I mentioned before, all of these things can't be created in a day. It takes months and sometimes even years to plan out a project and implement the entire thing while maintaining it for customers. At the end of the day, being a software engineer can mean many things. But the best way to describe the job is that you're a generalist and a detective. A generalist because you wear a lot of different hats throughout your career, and a detective because, as I said, a lot of time is spent troubleshooting, debugging, and solving problems that you just haven't seen before. So, good luck.